What do you reckon I'm going to find in there? Choc chocolate eggs in an ice cream. Well, that's wishful thinking. Should we have a look? Oh, it's got two lids. That's not ice cream. What do you think that is? Chocolate bar. I think it's cat food. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Oh. Ooh. Didn't like that at all. Ah, this is more exciting. What do you reckon's in here? Wine? We're not allowed wine in this church. I don't think it's a bottle of wine. I wasn't expecting that, but it's okay with me. I like Heinz tomato ketchup. Oh, this is more like it. What do you reckon is in here? McDonald's. It's, it's a chocolate egg. It says it's Easter mixed chocolate egg. I wish it was a Big Mac. Oh. Oh. I wasn't expecting that. And there's an Easter bunny, which reminds me, you may have some Easter bunnies come in the church during the end of the service to use the toilets. Now they're parading around the town, but that's, that will be expected. Wow, that was an interesting thing. But you've got to guess and work out. What do you think about those gifts? Is it good news? Or bad news? Are you happy? Or are you annoyed? If you thought you were going to get ice cream and ended up with cat food, I think I'd be a little bit annoyed. But then on the other hand, I love tomato ketchup with my cornflakes. So, I'm quite happy. I'm only joking, Jane. <laughs> Anything but cornflakes. So, I'm quite happy about that. And to have some Easter eggs with 50 pounds inside it, well, that's, that's really more than I could imagine. Today, as we talk through Easter, we will see three of Jesus' followers, his really good friends, heading to visit his grave. They saw him die on Friday, and they knew that he had been buried. They went to visit but they didn't find what they expected. What will they make of it? As we listen to the very beginning of the story of the first Easter morning, imagine the scene. It was so early and it was still so dark that Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' friends, was going to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalena came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. What was Mary expecting to find? On. That's right, the body of Jesus. So I need Mary and helpers. And what they're going to do, they're going to run around the church in a minute, but I also need Peter and John. Where's Peter and John? Can you guys come over? So Peter and John are going to stand over by the baptistry. And Mary and her friends are going to go around. <laughs> Just follow Bonnie. Just follow Bonnie. So Bonnie's going to go for a little walk. 
So you follow Bonnie, and then you're going to end up at the tomb eventually. It's not the hokey pokey. <laughs> no, that's a quick visit. You've got to go the long way. Yeah. You could see on his mouth, it's wide open. So Jesus is not in the tomb, he's gone. (laughs) Her mouth is still wide open. And now Mary and her friends go to search for Peter and John to tell them that Jesus' body is gone. Okay, that's end of scene one. (laughs) How often do you lose things? Favorite teddy? School bag? Car keys? Mobile phone? Hands up if you've said this week, I can't find my... I'm sure there's more than that. But there's one thing you can say about a dead body. You don't usually lose it. It stays where it's left. But not for Mary that day. We heard what she was thinking. Someone must have taken the body. I don't know where it is. Mary found something she didn't expect. She thought someone had taken Jesus' body. So she felt really sad. And we're going to follow Mary's story, and I promise there is a happy ending. And you may already know what it is. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been laid on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up and placed but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must be raised from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Okay, scene two. Mary and her friends. Peter and John. So just to recap, Mary and her friends went straight to the tomb quickly this time. It was early in the morning, it was dark, oh, I should have turned the lights out. She found the stone had been removed. That's not what she expected. So she ran back and told Peter and John, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where he is. Where have they put him? So Peter and John run around the church. (laughs) Peter is overtaken by John, who's younger than him. (laughs) John stops outside the tomb. Peter, being Peter, barges by, goes inside and sees that Jesus is not there.
They saw the grave clothes lying there, the strips of linen. After Peter had looked, John looked too. He saw the same things and believed that Jesus has risen from the dead. But Peter didn't yet believe it, nor did Mary. So now they go back to their homes. You can all sit on everyone's lap. There's only one chair. End of scene two. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom you are looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, but my God and your God. Mary Magdalena went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So Mary is back at the tomb with friends. Now Jesus is wearing a Wadworth 6X shirt that needs to come forward. Begrudgingly, I can tell. He's the gardener this morning. So Mary was back at the tomb. She had no idea what was going on. Crying, tears streaming down her face. With sound effects. (laughs) With more sound effects. Her tears were streaming down so much that she couldn't really see Clearly, the angels asked her, why was she crying? Felt like a stupid question. Then the gardener arrived. At least Mary thought he was the gardener. When the gardener said her name, Mary realized who he was. It was in her him saying her name that did it. If you are trusting Jesus, one day he will say your name and you will be overjoyed. You will smile and know exactly who he is. Mary was so pleased to see Jesus, she gave him a big hug. (laughs) She must have never wanted to let him go. But Jesus had something amazing to say to Mary. He said, you have to let me go because I am on my way back to be with my Father in heaven. He then said to Mary, go and tell my disciples, not sure where James and, sorry, where John and Peter are. Go and tell my disciples that I am alive. Soon I will go back to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Listen carefully to that. My God and your God. Jesus told Mary that she could call him 
Father, just like he did. Mary was part of God's family as much as Jesus is now. So Mary goes to tell Peter and John that Jesus is alive. They run around the church and celebrate and sit down. Who has seen the film Paddington? More adults and children, isn't that typical? (laughs) If you've seen the film, Paddington is taken in by the Browns. Now he causes chaos. He floods the house, and the father, Mr. Brown, is far from convinced that he should stay. But by the end, Mr. Brown welcomes Paddington into the family, treating him like his own son in a bare way. Watch the difference it makes for Paddington. To all who are trusting in Jesus, Jesus says, My Father, and your father. We have been brought into the family. We are home. It doesn't just change with a little detail of what we do one day a week. It changes who we are, how we feel, our sense of belonging, knowing that we can call God our father. We know that Jesus completely belongs with God the Father. He is as good and as perfect as the Father is. But now Jesus says that everyone who trusts in his finished saving work on the cross, as different as we are from God, we can be part of God's family. That is what the resurrection does. It shows us for certain that Jesus had finished the job that he came to do and has brought us home to his Father. Mary doesn't need to hold on to Jesus as this is not the end of the story. Jesus is on his way back to his throne in heaven. So when Mary is away from Jesus, she is safe. Because God is her father. To be a Christian is to have a forever father. Our father, who changes the story, our story. He will always be with us. He is always good. And one day we will go home to be with him forever. Because of Jesus. I'm going to read you. Verse 18 of chapter 20. Mary Magdalena went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Mary Magdalena went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Mary is so sure about Jesus and about his resurrection, that she runs back to the other disciples, you can have a time off, and bursts in to share the news. I have seen the Lord. Mary saw the risen Jesus. She knew for certain that he is alive, and that his Father is our Father. Let us believe those words and feel her joy as we celebrate Easter together.